Hi, and welcome to Q's workshop, or should I say welcome to behind the scenes to Q's workshop. Uh, today I'd just like to give you some visibility of designing. Uh, today I'll be designing a ER32 lathe collet chuck. Uh, majority of the measurements I've collected from uh, other versions that's on the internet and uh, some of it is just based on the measurements that I require for my lathe. I use a web-based application called Onshape to do my designing. Um, I've captured majority of the screen, not the whole of the screen, uh, so please don't take this as an instructional video. Uh, it is very simple to use the tool. Uh, there are a lot of sources out there that shows you how to use it. Uh, this is merely a a behind the scenes view of me designing it, showing how simple it really is, uh, and then moving on in a separate video into the actual manufacturing of it. So let's hop straight into it. I start off with creating the base sketch uh, that the design is based on. Uh, so that's ultimately a piece of paper and you start drawing the figures that you require. Uh, on a one-dimensional layer. So I start off with at least the biggest diameter uh, of uh, the lathe collar chuck, which is the, the full outer, and that is the equivalent size to my spindle uh, with the plate on my lathe, uh, which is 125 mil. And from that, uh, there is a slight recess that the collar chuck actually fits onto. So the, the lathe spindle plate has got an, an extruded element on that actually registers against the collet chuck, um, and that makes sure that it's always concentric. Um, so that register has to be perfect. So it's never about where the screws are or uh, or how flat the back is, it has to be against that register, and, and that's what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, so as you would see there now, we've we've got the 125 mil, um, which is the outer diameter. Then we've got the recess in the inside, uh, which uh, is meant to be 95. Uh, I have measured my lathe uh, back plate, and it is slightly smaller than 95 uh, millimeters. Uh, so that I will go on feel once I get close to 95. I'm sure I'm going to overshoot it once or twice, but uh, that's what we're going to work with. And uh, the third dimension that you see there, which is the 108 millimeters, that is the diameter of the actual screw holes. So there will be three uh, bolts that is going to be holding it onto the actual back plate and those holes is on a di diameter of uh, 108 millimeters. So there is, is some different calculations that goes in to get them precise. Uh, I do not have a DRO on my milling machine to actually get them precise. So I'll be, a, I'll be doing a lot of manual calculations and actually marking it off uh, when I get to making it. Uh, ultimately, it's a triangle and it needs to be concentric on the 108 so it's it's really just 60 degrees uh 60 60 60 uh, of the triangle so it, it's just going to be a couple of measurements uh, the middle circle that i've drawn there now is going to be the actual spindle nose uh, so it's or the, the, the lathe chuck nose. Um, it's it's the part where the actual little collet fits into. So once I start extruding it, so once I start building the three dimension uh, onto it, um, that's where that's where that uh, circle is going to come into play. Uh, it is an ER32 as I've mentioned, and the overall diameter of the nose that the bolt has to fit onto is uh, 40 millimeters. So that is going to be a M40 bolt that's going to go on there. Um, so right, the in the inner diameter that I'm busy working on there is um, that's going to be adjustable uh, depending on the angle of the slope. 
inside uh, the, the nose. So sorry, I'm just I'm calling it the nose, but it's the part that it's the, the extruded part that really stands out um, where where the where the collet fits into. So within there, it's it's not a symmetrical hole going through the collet. Uh, there is a taper to it. Uh, it is an eight degree taper on each side so it's when you're looking at it from the top uh, it will be 16 degrees in total um, but it's actually only eight degrees uh, per side on on the diameter it's eight degrees and because of that slope um, there's there's a couple of different uh, lines or at least uh, circles that I've that I've had to draw there all right, so I'm extruding it now. Um, this is basically the height now of the, the 3D object. Uh, the the overall size of the extrude of the whole collet will be 45 millimeters, uh, but the the base plate itself, which you've got, which which you can see there now, is going to be 23, and the the nose that sticks up is going to be 22 millimeters. Uh, so there, I've got the I've got the nose now that I'm going to be pulling up. Uh, so I've made it 45, but that is because it's from the other side of of the the, the drawing. So it's coming past the 23 of the base, plus then the 22 above the base, which comes up to a total of 45. All right, so that's it for the main body uh, of the collar chuck. I now move on to some of the finer details. Uh, one of those being some of the chamfers, um, the recess on the back of the, the collar chuck. So the, the recess, as I mentioned earlier on, is specifically there as a registration against the spindle plate um, so that is ultimately what makes it concentric so the recess uh, that i'm creating here is going to be three and a half uh, millimeters uh, the the little extrusion on the back plate for the registration is just under 3.5 so i'm making this 3.5 and then I'm moving over on to just the the bolt um, side of things. You never really see in the visuals that I've created this bolt pattern on. It's more just to get the sizing um, right of, of the nose. Uh, so there I've, I've created as a, an ISO standard, uh, which is going to be an M40 bolt that will eventually fit on there. So it creates um, the little recess at the back uh, where the threads will end. Uh, creating the bolt uh, and the threads will also help once the end drawing is created, it will put all the measurements on the drawing. I then changed my mind uh, on a few aspects of, of the drawing itself. Uh, I didn't want uh, the bolt holes uh, all the way through, uh, so there will be threaded uh, bolts, bolt holes, and I didn't want them all the way through. Uh, so what I've then done is I've removed them and I'm re-adding them uh, on again uh, as actual bolt holes. So I'm using features within uh, the application to create the bolt holes and to create the actual hole taper uh, that's going to be going into the spindle nose. So here you can see I'm using the, the hole feature um, I'm using a, a custom hole, uh, which has got a a depth of 32 millimeters, um, and I've got an eight degree uh, taper on it there. So there, um, it's it's got the eight millimeter now, all the way through, and uh, I'm now going to create the the bolt holes in in the plate. Uh, where I'm, I'm not going to have them go all the way through. Um, they're going to be 20 millimeters deep. 
Uh, so then at least the top piece of the plate will or at least should be solid when I'm finished uh, when I'm finished working it. I can't guarantee that that's definitely going to be the case uh, mainly because creating the recess uh, on the back uh, which is going to be against the registration of the spindle back plate on the lathe I may overshoot that measurement, uh, so I'm already envisioning I'm going to have to be cleaning it up and starting again, and that will all uh, affect the whole depth uh, that that is that it may eventually peak out on the other side. Uh, but in the drawing itself, uh, I'm making these uh, blind holes uh, ISO standard, and it's going to be M8. Right, I removed some of uh, the elements uh, when I went back to do the holes, uh, the blind holes and not the through holes. So all I'm doing now is I'm coming back and, and adding the, the little recess uh, that I removed. I'm just going to be adding the recess back, back on. Uh, same as previous, it's going to be 3.5 millimeter uh, recess on, on the back uh, for the registration. So going over my drawing, I realized I made a mistake. Uh, the tapered hole down the center for the collet, uh, I made that uh, eight degrees. Uh, so that is eight degrees uh, on the radius. So when you look at it uh, on the on the full diameter, uh, it, it's meant to be 16. So it, it's eight degrees on each side. Um, so I've, I've, I've adjusted that, I've, I've moved it up to, to eight degrees, oh, sorry, 16 degrees, uh, and uh, I'm now just removing a, a piece of material that has now peaked its head out after I made that adjustment. Um, because the because of the the tape the degree of the tape there was now a piece of material that so that peaked out there, uh, so that has been removed. So the last feature for uh, the chuck is a hole uh, along the radius uh, of uh, the, the chuck and that is to put a piece of bar stock in that you can leverage against it when uh, loosening and fastening the, the bolt on the front for the collets. Um, so uh, to do this uh, I need to use a plane feature. Uh, the Ultimately, a plane is to create a new surface to work on. Uh, so as you can see there, you've got the front top um, uh, back uh, to, that you've actually got those planes that you can work on. Now, there is no plane against the radius of the collet. So I had to create a new plane, which ultimately gives me a new surface um, that I can use to, to draw against. Uh, so I've created the plane. I then create a sketch on the plane and um, I, I make my uh, I make my hole on uh, on that uh, sketch then. So it's going to be a, a eight millimeter hole uh, depending on the type of um, round bar stock that I get to use here I may have to make it a little bit bigger uh, it, it could possibly go up to a 10 mil uh, just to uh, make it a bit stronger um, to to hold on to when, uh, when loosening and, and, and tightening that bolt. Uh, so yeah, I'm just making sure that it's uh, evenly spaced between the two sides. Uh, probably not the the quickest way to do that. Uh, there is easier ways, uh, but I like having measurements put onto my drawing like this that I, I can visually see it at any time when I open this up in, in the future. All right, so uh, now that I've actually got a place where the hole is going to go, I uh, just use the hole feature again to to drop it in. Uh, there I clearly 
clearly used the wrong location for the hole and it came up from the bottom plane instead of uh, where I needed to mark it off. There we go. And uh, then we just make it a blind hole again and just set the size for it. Uh, so that's it uh, for the designing. Um, as I mentioned, it, it is quite simple to do this type of thing yourself. Uh, all the features are very easily labeled in the app. Uh, so following on from this now, all I do is I export it into a drawing. Uh, so to make visibility in the workshop a lot easier, uh, I create a drawing and I pull all the measurements uh, forward within the drawing. Uh, there you can see uh, we've got the size of all the bolt holes, uh, we've got the size of all the diameters. Uh, I mean the hole that we just made on the radius uh, of, of, of the of the collar chuck, it's a... Uh, uh, eight millimeter hole it goes 40 millimeters deep uh, it's then got a, a, a slight chamfer on it a 45 degree chamfer um, and that and it's m10 or, or 10 uh, millimeters in diameter uh, the bolt hole pattern so the three bolt holes that mounted to the back plate uh, it, it's represented there again as as m8s uh, they are 93 point five three millimeters apart on the 108 millimeter radius uh, and uh, again because it's ultimately a triangle uh, they are 60 degrees um, from from the, the first hole 60 degrees in each direction uh, on on that 108 millimeter rate uh, diameter uh, there would be a hole uh, so another thing to do with these drawings uh, once they're created is actually to pull them over to the 3D printer uh, and actually do some rapid prototyping on it. Uh, so as you can see there, uh, I've printed one out. Uh, so I've now got a full visual representation of uh, what I've designed um, and I can then measure it. I can take this to my machine. I can see if it actually fits properly. Uh, then on that I can make any finer adjustments uh, that's needed. So that's it uh, for today's designing video. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the actual manufacturing of uh, the R32 lathe collar chuck.